we already know how to deal with voltage divider biasing because we completed this biasing scheme in case of JFET and as biasing of depletion type MOSFET is almost same as the biasing biasing of junction field effect transistor we will directly start with a problem and in this problem we will determine the operating point we will determine the QSN point and the two coordinates are VGSQ this is the X coordinate and IDQ is the Y coordinate so this is what we have to find in this problem you can see the network on your screen and this network is almost same as it was in case of JFAT there is only one difference the difference you can see here instead of having n channel JFAT we have n channel depletion type MOSFET and out of mathematical approach and graphical approach we will follow the graphical approach and for that we require the transfer curve of the device and the load line the transfer curve of the device means the transfer curve of n channel depletion type MOSFET and to find out the transfer curve of n channel depletion type MOSFET we need four points we need one two three and four points out of these four points the first two points are for the case when VGS is negative I will write this down the first two points are when VGS is negative and the third point is when VGS is zero and the fourth point is when VGS is positive and if you compare this with JFAT then you will find in case of JFAT we needed only three points when VGS is negative and when VGS is zero VGS VGS greater than zero volt was not allowed in case of JFET the controlling voltage cannot be positive but in case of depletion type MOSFET the controlling voltage can be positive so we have to include this fourth point also to find out the transfer curve now let's start with the first point we will get the first point we will get the first point when the drain current ID is equal to 0 amp put ID equal to 0 amp in the Shockley's equation and you will get VGS equal to VP and VP is equal to minus 3 volt so VGS is equal to minus 3 volt so these are the two coordinates of the first point for the second point I will make VGS equal to VP over 2 this means VGS is equal to minus 1.5 volt because VP is equal to minus 3 volt and when you put VGS equal to minus 1.5 volt in the Shockley's equation you will get the drain current ID equal to 1.5 milliamp so in this way we have the two coordinates of the second point and uh, these two points are when VGS is negative you can see VGS is negative in both the cases now we will talk about the case in which VGS is 0 volt simply put VGS equal to 0 volt in the Shockley's equation and this will give you drain current ID equal to IDSS IDSS is given it is equal to 6 milliamp 6 milliamp so we have the two coordinates of the third point now let's move to the last point which is the fourth point and this point is special because it is only included when we have depletion type MOSFET I will make VGS less than minus VP over 2 minus VP over 2 is 1.5 volt so I will make VGS less than 1.5 volt and let's take VGS equal to 1 volt and when VGS is equal to 1 volt you will get the drain current ID equal to 10.67 milliamp or we can write 10.7 milliamp so these are the four points and now we will quickly locate them and draw the transfer curve of the device regarding the fourth point there is one very important thing you have to remember when VGS is positive and you go on making VGS more and more positive the drain current ID increases rapidly so don't select VGS very large 
try this way of selecting VGS make it less than minus VP over 2 and you will get the corresponding drain current I have already located the four points I will directly paste the result I made this on my graph book and you can see the four points this is the first point second point third point and the fourth point and now I will join these four points to get the transfer curve this is how the final result will look now we will obtain the load line equation and using that equation we will plot the load line to obtain the load line equation we will do the same thing we did in case of JFET we will separate this side of the circuit with this side and we can do this because gate current I G is nearly equal to 0 amp and let's say current through this resistance is I1 and current through this resistance is I2 by applying KCL at this node you will find I1 is same as I2 from KCL we have I1 equal to I2 plus IG IG is equal to 0 so I1 is equal to I2 and as current passing through this resistance is same as current passing through this resistance they are connected in series potential at this point is equal to is equal to 18 volt 18 volt and by applying the voltage divided rule you will get you will get voltage across this resistance equal to VG VG potential at this point is also equal to VG and voltage across this resistance is equal to VG now to obtain the load line I will apply KVL in this loop so let's see what we have after applying the KVL we have plus of VG plus of VG then we have minus of VGS minus of VGS then we have VRS 750 ohm is resistance RS and drop across this resistance is VRS which is equal to IDRS so VGS is simply equal to VG minus IDRS this is the equation of load line and now I will write this equation in the form y equal to mx plus c so id is equal to minus 1 over rs vgs plus vg over rs id is y minus 1 over rs is the slope vgs is x and vg over rs is the intercept c and to plot the load line we need two points one point we can get from the intercept the intercept is equal to VG over RS and VG is equal to R2 multiplied with VDD over R1 plus R2 you can get this by applying voltage divider rule here VDD is the biasing potential which is equal to 18 volt R1 is 110 mega ohm and R2 is 10 mega ohm so we have everything to calculate VG it is equal to 10 mega ohm multiplied with 18 volt over 110 mega ohm plus 10 mega ohm when you solve this you will have VG equal to 1.5 volt so VG over RS, VG over RS is equal to 1.5 volt divided by 750 ohm and this is equal to 2 milliamp. So we have the first point in which the X coordinate is equal to 0 volt and the Y coordinate is equal to 2 milliamp and we got this from intercept. I will locate it and I will get this point. VGS is 0 volt and ID is 2 milliamp now we will find out the second point and to find out the second point I will make drain current ID equal to 0 amp I will put this here when you put ID equal to 0 amp you will find VGS is equal to VG so VGS is equal to VG and VG we calculated it is equal to 1.5 volt 1.5 volt so we have the two coordinates when ID 
is equal to 0 amp VGS is equal to 1.5 volt so this is the point I will locate it this is the point 1.5 volt and now I will join these two points to get the load line this is the load line and the intersection the intersection is the operating point this is the operating point and to find out the x and y coordinates we have to find out the corresponding y coordinate and the corresponding x coordinate of this point the corresponding y coordinate the corresponding y coordinate is 3.1 milliamp and the corresponding x coordinate the corresponding x coordinate is minus 0 0.8 volt minus 0 0.8 volt so this is the answer we have the operating point I will write the answer quickly VGSQ is equal to minus 0 0.8 volt and IDQ is equal to 3.1 milliamp now we will discuss the next part of this problem and in this part I will make resistance RS equal to 150 ohm initially resistance RS was equal to 750 ohm but now it is equal to 150 ohm this means we have reduced the resistance RS and when you reduce resistance RS you will find the intercept C increases because it is equal to VG over RS you are reducing the denominator so the overall quantity will increase and the slope minus 1 over RS will also increase the slope will also increase because again you are reducing the denominator so a straight line like this we will get I am not plotting it accurately but this is how the straight line will look the slope will increase and also the intercept this time this is the intercept instead of this and uh, if you see the operating point you will find this is the operating point and this time the x coordinate of the operating point is not negative it was negative earlier but now it is not negative it is positive so this is what we can get when we have depletion type MOSFET because in case of depletion type MOSFET the transfer curve can extend to this region also when VGS is positive and if we select the resistance RS in such a way that the straight line will be like this having the larger slope and larger intercept we can have the operating point having the X coordinate positive this means operating point can lie in this quadrant as well so this is all for this lecture if you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section and regarding the second load line you can plot it accurately you have the value of RS simply obtain the intercept and you will get the point on the y-axis join the two points and you will get the new load line